Hi guys, this is FK and I'm starting to become an HTMX um, enthusiast. Yeah, I'm becoming a, no, like, I'm, I think I've gone from enthusiast level to fan level. Yeah, I'm now an, a big time HTMX fan. And um, one thing that I feel a lot of people would like to know is how HTMX compares to other single page application that's the frameworks, the single page application frameworks. That's your React, your Vue.js, your AngularJS. Uh, Angular, right? Rather, it was AngularJS a lot of years back, but now it's Angular. Yeah. So we want to know how it compares with this um, almost de facto libraries that we use to build our front end today. That's the uh, SPA libraries. And that is what I'm going to be trying to answer in this video. I'm going to be describing what ATMX is, what it aims to achieve, and how it is going to be different from a single page application. So, if you are interested in HTMX like me or you have some of these questions, uh, follow along as I run you through some of the um, slides I have here. So how does um, HTMX compare to other single application frameworks as your ReactJS, your Vue.js and the rest? Um, first, let's talk about how we went from building multi-page applications to single-page applications. Now, the web started, and let's call it Web 1.0, the web started being hypermedia driven. Now, when I say hypermedia, what I mean is um, hypertext. So we, we add hypertext, uh, and that's what HTML is even named. With. HTML is simply hypertext markup language. And we also had hypermedia controls like um, hyperlinks and forms. So hypermedia is uh, kind of like everything hyper about. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. Everything I put about the web, the text, the links, the videos, everything, every form of media on the web is called, is, 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 is under hypermedia. And we basically had two controls and that's our forms and hyperlinks. And um, those applications built then were multi-page applications. If you were needed to move from one page to another, you had to click a link, which is going to make a HTTP GET request to fetch another page and replace the entire browser DOM with the content, the HTML content of that server response. So the web started hypermedia driven. Yeah, started hypermedia driven. And like I said, we're building multiple page applications. We had uh, hyperlinks and um, every other native web media. Now, so what, what, what were the shortcomings of um, Web 1.0? The first was that there were limited hypermedia controls. And even up till now, we were like the main hypermedia controls are still forms and hyperlinks. We've not had extra uh controls for different kind of things for inter uh, different types of interactivity or trying to interact with the server we've not had any other elements that would help us achieve that so that was first one of the um shortcomings of uh, web 1.0 also it was quite difficult to build complex inter interfaces the web was always regarded slow compared to native desktop applications you know native desktop applications have this very very quick response uh Pages load quickly. You don't you don't click you don't click pages around the desktop application and you know you have a uh, loading bar or stuff like that. It rarely happens. But in web, in, in on the web, it was, it was like default. You already had the had the browser that will be scrolling that that scroll on the browser tab before it loads a new page and everything. So and it was it was really um, difficult to build the kind of experiences that uh, single application single page applications are giving us today. And another problem was that nothing much has changed in in a lot of years. Yeah, the web uh, started with hypertext, hyperlinks, and other forms of uh, hypermedia, but we, we haven't had so much of new tags being brought into the web to give the web uh, more, uh, to make it more robust, to make the web more robust. Um, we only had the semantic tags that came at the point, you know, the header tag, the footer tag, and stuff like that. And there hasn't really been any new tag we had, we had the video tag we had the i think the audio tag and so but it's the 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 advancement of the web has been kind of slow and that's why we needed that's why spas came in that's why we had to start building uh single page applications and it was not even just about the number of pages it was just about the interactivity that we wanted to achieve so um spas to the rescue so what are single page applications? What are single page applications? Uh, a single page application has the entire front end on one page. So unlike the native web 1.0 strategy, um, the entire front end is on one page, a single page application, which is what is named by single page. Also, the DOM, that's document object model, and the BOM, which is a browser object model, are managed by JavaScript. Yeah, they are managed by JavaScript. The Java, J there's a JavaScript model that runs the entire page. So all the native stuff, more like a lot of them take a backseat to what is JavaScript is mainly dictating what is going on in the DOM. 
uh, pay, uh, also the your pages, your applications, they consume what is known as data APIs. They consume what is known as data APIs, meaning you just call an API and return something like XML or it returns um, JSON, but predominantly JSON. So let's not even talk about XML. So the pages, the um, all the components on your single page applications, they consume uh, data APIs, which basically return JSON. So you use that data uh to do any to any sort of um action or interactivity that you want on your on your page or to display any type of information you want on your page also single page applications kind of dump the hypermedia controls they dump the hypermedia controls uh that's the uh, hyperlinks and forms um they were they basically were just page elements they didn't like have they, they didn't use the um hypermedia architecture that they were me meant to use Everything was done by JavaScript. Everything was controlled by JavaScript. If you need to move from one page to another, JavaScript is going to do that. If you needed to submit a form, run a form, everything good thing you have in a form, JavaScript is going to run that. The validation, native valid you're not going to use the native validation. You're going to use the JavaScript-based validation and all that. So uh, the hypermedia controls kind of took a back seat. And also, yeah, like I said, activities such as updating the DOM, state management, routing, changing the URL in the browser, everything was done by JavaScript. The, the JavaScript was basically controlling the entire application. So HTML kind of took, or let's say hypermedia, kind of took a backseat to JavaScript. And some of the major frameworks that I've achieved, that we've used to achieve this include React, Vue.js, uh, Svelte, and, and Svelte.js, and, and Angular also. Angular also. So uh, why did we move to SPAs in the first place? Why did we... Uh, start using single page applications in the first place. I've, I've mentioned that, but I'm just going to reiterate. First, they helped us to build sophisticated in interfaces. Yeah, interfaces that require complex uh, interactivity. SPAs allowed us to build that. And it kind of augmented for the shortcomings of HTML and hypermedia. You know, we don't have to wait for the W3C consortium to have all their meetings and have all their deliberations before we have new uh, stuff brought into HTML. You can just build it. You can build it. You can build components. You can build really reusable components. You can use the virtual DOM and stuff like that. It was just amazing the fact that we could have all that control in our hand and be able to build any type of interactivity we want with cool animations with um smooth transitions between pages and stuff like that very nested navigations and all that so it helped us to augment all the shortcomings of html and upper media and also we we're able to bridge the gap performance gap between desktop and web applications the web wouldn't have been where it is today without single page applications the kind type of interactivity like i i remember when i the first time i used two-way binding in angular js that was so many years ago it was just mind-blowing it was really mind-blowing to have such kind of that kind of uh capabilities there in the browser so single page applications helped us to achieve a whole lot of what we have today you see applications like netflix you see applications like uh, facebook you see applications like twitter all this wouldn't have been possible. All the type of cool um, front-end sophistication that you're seeing today wouldn't have been possible without single-page applications. But as much as all this was good, there was a price to pay. Yeah, there was a price to pay. There were some demerits of single-page application, and some of them didn't even appear until now that we've spent a lot of years actually building single-page applications. I think my first... Um, application was around 2015 i used angular js to build a single page applications back then so we've had a lot of years to really think to really see what the future was is like using or choosing uh spa frameworks single page application frameworks as the de facto for building applications web applications and our front end and the first is javascript fatigue oh my god there's so much to keep up with there's so many libraries i i didn't when i started coding forms were one of the easiest things but now forms are so complex <laughs> it's, it's, it's really difficult to work with forms. You, you have to most of the time import an entire library for forms sometimes in angular you have to import another library for form validation so because the native hypermedia infrastructure does not uh, it takes a backseat to javascript JavaScript had to do a whole lot of the work. JavaScript had to try to simulate what you will get from the native hypermedia, even though it was improving it and it was making it better. But it's, it's just quite easy to just use this form control sometimes. I remember sometimes building React applications and you're typing something into the text box and because the page is, up, is refreshing, the virtual DOM is refreshing, what you're typing just is not appearing or just goes off. Like there was, I remember the first time I tried to build a form in React and I needed to write code that will make sure that what I'm typing into the form 
control is actually appearing like that, that's the input input field i have to write code for that this is something that happens natively you have to write code to make sure that what you're typing into your form field is appearing in your form field how crazy is that so hypermedia uh, it, uh it, 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 those frameworks they do away with the underlying hypermedia hypermedia infrastructure uh con the controls don't work naturally forms are hard back buttons yeah back buttons that just come with the browser and they work natively started becoming a problem you have to also hook javascript logic into um uh, back buttons so th those are one of the frustrations that came with with um uh building apps with single page application frameworks we talked about the javascript fatigue having to manage a lot of uh libraries libraries for animation so many th versions to keep up with and all that try setting up a new angular application and you know what i'm talking about like your very first angular application you know what i'm talking about and also we started having these javascript heavy clients you know like all those old heavy clients of the past where there's so much logic and so much uh uh code being written in the in, in the client so javascript heavy models are stored on the browser because it, it needs to update the ui and the ui also updates the javascript model and it's, it's just led to a whole lot of complexity in the front end just because we are trying to make this uh we just try to make this uh, spa utopia uh to keep working to keep flowing without any any uh without any drawbacks so it's it just made front-end development really come a lot of people in the front-end space now are really complaining about how they miss the good old days with jquery you know you just import jquery and you just start writing you just start writing your front-end but now you have to set up you have to set up uh npm you have to set up uh, some bundlers you have to set up this you have to set up that this uh, library is clashing with that library especially in angular yeah, i'm going to really be hard on angular especially in angular there's just so much to keep up with and react to grows with time react will start you off lightly but it grows with with time St things starts becoming really really complex remember like i said trying to do validation in react bring in another library for validation <laughs> so and i stuck with view for me i just stuck with view because view just was a bit uh, easier for me to to relate with what i used to have in the past um so yeah but we can argue about uh, front end uh, SPA frameworks all day, but uh, let's let's go back. Let's 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 not digress. So we started having these very JavaScript heavy clients. So those are some of the drawbacks of the front end, and um, that is now what HTMX is trying to solve. But first, let's talk about what HTMX is. Now, HTML. What is HTMX, and why do we? Why are we using HTMX? HTMX is an hypermedia oriented library. So Things will have been much easier if everything had just come under hypermedia. Everything had just come natively with the web, and we don't have to write all this JavaScript to get all the interactions we have today. So, what an hypermedia-oriented um, library like HTMX is trying to do is to make sure that we keep our hyper hypermedia controls working, we keep the underlying hypermedia infrastructure, and have a way to bridge the interactivity gaps. Yeah, all those interactivities that we need. That made us to embrace spas we can bridge the gap by having a library that just simply augments hypermedia the uh, underlying hypermedia infrastructure to still help us to achieve the cool interactive uh, functions that we're able to build today so it, bu it bridges the gap between the mpas of the past that's the multi-page applications and the new spa applications that's the single page applications that we are building today uh, it allows you to continue to use hypermedia yeah your, your forms will con your forms will work naturally naturally your forms will work your back buttons will work <laughs> your navigation will work as it should be natively or natively without you having to struggle or write a lot of javascript to just keep the uh to to keep the house from crashing also htmx consumes hypermedia apis now this is a very very important part you know we mentioned earlier that single page applications consume data apis so these apis simply just return data they return json uh, mostly these days so but htmx consumes hypermedia apis and hypermedia apis are apis that return hypermedia they return html just just to be simple they return html so that the dom will not be update, updated using javascript you're not going to you have to use a, a virtual dom or trying to be writing javascript to update the dom no the dom that needs to replace this the, the new state of the dom that needs to replace the old state is actually going to be sent by the api and is going to just replace it's just going to enter into the dom it's just going to be appended to the dom 
so the same way the web was built in a way that when you want to go from one page to another it just makes a get request fetches the html response and replaces the dom with the html response you can do the same thing with htmx but you can actually do it even within div tags you don't have to clear the whole page you can just pick a section of your html and just replace it with a different uh html different dom structure you can just replace it so H uh, htmx consumes hypermedia is is not built to consume data apis that return json is built to consume hypermedia apis that return html and um and this updates the dom natively yeah the same the way uh, it's intended to be the dom is updated natively and also um they help you build uh multiple multi-page application so you, you still build your multi-page applications with uh all the interactivity benefits you don't have to uh fix yourself or uh lock yourself into a single page structure like a lot of us a lot of us are still kind of cool with the whole multi-page thing but because you're using a single page library you just have to stick with that you just have to stick with the application being a single page application and we all know even like i remember one of the issues i had with um spa even way back at then when i was using a uh, angular js was that it adds this pound sign in the URL and it doesn't help sites like Google and, and the rest to in all the search engines to index the pages. I know later it was solved using a lot of um, uh, JavaScript magic to make the URLs clean, but building multi page applications, you don't have to struggle with that because your pages are going to be naturally indexed. So you don't have to get locked into that uh, SPA structure. You can also build a single page application using HTMX, but you, you don't have to, um, it's, you, you don't even advise it. You don't even advise it, but it's something you can do if it doesn't need something simple. So um, yeah, so that is all. I think I'm done with this slide. Oh yeah, the main difference. So the main difference, if I'm going to finish with this. The main difference between HTMX and single page applications or single page application frameworks is not the number of pages. It's not about the number of pages. It's not because one is going to help you uh, to build single page applications and the other is going to help you to return back to the multi page application structure. The main difference is in the underlying infrastructure. Single page application frameworks like React.js and Vue.js, they use a JavaScript model to run the DOM, to uh, run the entire application. So the DOM is updating the UI, the UI is updating the DOM, and all that. But HTMX is a hypermedia driven library and it is using the hypermedia architecture of the web, the one that came with the web naturally, natively. So you don't need to do a lot of JavaScript gymnastics to maintain such kind of uh, behavior that the web comes with natively in as in, as is the case with a with single page application. You just inherit all the good stuff that come with the web and also bridge the gap to add more interactivity into your hypermedia tools and also oh yeah we talked about sp yeah sure so spas use the javascript model architecture while hmx uses the native hypermedia architecture so that is the main difference in another video i'm going to be telling you when and when not to use it uh, uh, hmx and when and when not to use uh, single page applications but we're going to be closing here because this is the final thing that Kind of wraps everything together as to what's the difference between htmx and these single page application frameworks htmx is an hypermedia driven library that helps you to use the underlying hypermedia infrastructure to continue to build apps using the native controls on the web and still being able to add a lot of wonderful interactive features while single page applications um we all know what they do they use javascript to run the entire dom and kind of ditch the <laughs> hypermedia architecture so thank you very much i hope this video has been helpful it doesn't help you if it has been helpful to you remember to drop a like and subscribe for more atmx goodness take care bye